Hey everyone, welcome to this random and special pick a card episode. I normally do pick a card only on Patreon guys, so if you aren't a Patreon member, come on over there. Pick a card is free of charge and it's ad free over there. But because I w went into town, I thought I would share this on YouTube as well. I wanted to go to that place in the corner there, that pink little cafe. Whoops, don't get run over. <laughs> I'm filming the ground because I want you to see the beautiful leaves on the road. And I want you to see this beautiful cafe. So it's called Peggy Portion. They do cakes that look like works of art. And inside the interior is full of fresh roses. I got a rose latte, it was delicious. I did no work, as you can see. And there are some of the cakes that you can take a look at over there. It was such a beautiful day out. It was also sunny. My latte is going down nicely. I've still not done any work. And here's me outside fixing my hair because I'm about to film. And looking back because I'm trying not to get run over. Seems like the theme of the day. I'll hand over to me now. Hey everyone, I just had a rose latte at Peggy Portion. I've always wanted to try it. I've seen lots of London vloggers go there and I thought I'm going to try that place and so finally I did try it. And now we are off to the museum. So what I thought we would do for Pick a Card this time is we would, I'm just trying to see this in the viewfinder thing. Apologies guys, I'm not very good at filming outside. Look at this. I just wanted to show you this very quickly. Look at that. Can you see it? Am I framing it properly? I can't see because my little wind muff thing is in the way. Anyway, isn't that an object? That is quite an object. And what I wanted to do is something completely different. So instead of getting my pick a card audience to choose crystals or small little objects on a table. I thought why don't we go into central London and choose beautiful objects in the city of London and the place where I wanted to go and do this is at the National Gallery. So we're going to do that right now. We are going to jump on a train and head into that part of town where the National Gallery is and we're gonna have some interesting objects to choose from this time. So join me on a little adventure. So from Victoria Station, it's just a couple of stops over to Charing Cross. And it was kind of busy out and about, not too busy, which was nice. And this guy was incredible. He was playing the most beautiful ambient music, which was much needed actually, because what I discovered was that the queues are really long just to get into the museum. I waited in a queue of about half an hour, that was half an hour long actually. And I happened to be standing next to this wonderful lady. She was in London for the day from Man Manchester and we had a great conversation the whole way, which was really fun. When I got into the museum, I had forgotten how beautiful the interior was. It's been a long time since I've been here. I forgot there was a glass dome at the top. And now on the floor, there were these incredible mosaic tile art pieces and I'm thinking I have not even got into the museum yet and I could film so many pick a card objects right here look at that humor lucidity I think the next one is leisure there were heaps of these with a single word they were really beautiful so who knows maybe one day those could be our objects anyway I'll let you get on and Select your object this time around. See you in your reading. Hi 
Hi there group number one. Okay, your painting is Mars and Venus by Botticelli. It's right in front of me. Very famous work of art showing how Venus, the goddess of love, conquers Mars, the god of war. Hi there group two. So your painting is by Turner and it features an uncompleted city. Hi there, group number three. So your painting is by Rousseau. It features a tiger and it's called Surprised. And this is a tiger that is surprised by man's arrival. Hi there group one welcome group one now if you chose the Botticelli painting Mars and Venus then you are in the right place welcome everyone so today I'm going to launch this pick a card on both YouTube and Patreon the exact same video guys if you're watching here on YouTube and I know some of you have said hey I miss your pick a card readings where did they go well they're on patreon so you can sign up for free there and you can head on over there the the readings are free they're ad free you can enjoy them there I do them every couple of weeks or so uh, and yeah hopefully you will Come and join us there because it's a smaller more intimate space it's really nice actually I'm, I'm loving being on patreon it's a very lovely platform easy to upload all of that you know and people are just uh, the group we have is so wonderful so you know sometimes with um, the big YouTube audience yeah it can be uh, well it's good too <laughs> it's good as well on YouTube but very nice there on Patreon it's a bit smaller group all right so now if you chose the Botticelli painting let's see what cards come we're going to draw a couple of these because last time I did this I forgot to draw them for group one all right so Botticelli painting I've got it written here Mars and Venus and this is where you know we've got the lovers the couple they're they're there they're together Venus you know wide awake as um, as dear sister Wendy Beckett said she said you know Venus is there after a night of passion she's describing all this I love her description and she says she's cool as a cucumber not a hair out of place and and yeah it's basically just a depiction of the feminine energy conquering the masculine energy it's a really really lovely painting and love wins over war it really does love wins and of course you know when you're a student of astrology you know that Venus is health and beauty and abundance and receptivity and all of these wonderful things so perhaps if you've chosen group number one just off the back of the painting we can say that maybe you're tuning into that Venus energy 
and you know I, I really like that energy she's she's just awake she's perfectly content and she's just wondering okay what's next you know I've, I've conquered Mars <laughs> what's next so maybe you're in that frame where you're wondering what's next let's have a look at what's in these cards and see what comes oh how beautiful and how perfect the ace of cups yes well so look at that you're in that Venus kind of energy this is all about love we've got a female here holding a cup so yeah that feminine that feminine energy how perfect we've got butterflies flying out of the cup you're ready for something new i think you're ready there's a readiness here okay we've got an animal card as well wow the crocodile okay interesting if this is to do with love maybe someone has their eye on you because we've got the ace of cups here this could be signaling new love coming into your life lord shiva transcend the false self okay that is interesting right i'm going to look at all of these because we've got a story here uh, we've got the story here already okay what do we have in here the queen of pentacles abundance so certainly your feminine energies are strong right now the full wonderful yes and we've got quest here as well oh wow the ten of swords okay this is very interesting there's something here about you using the feminine energy to transcend something difficult something difficult possibly in the recent past and this does look like it's to do with the masculine energy i'm getting the feel of a, dif a difficult masculine energy and there's been some kind of difficulty challenge conflict but you're on the spiritual path so you know that you can't just abandon this or leave this or go away from this there's something about this is part of your life this could be by the way a masculine energy that's family or that is um, like a family member it could be a sibling parent partner this is some kind of masculine energy that you can't just <clears throat> escape from wow and it's really interesting because my voice is starting to yeah it hasn't done this for a long time okay <clears throat> this is quite interesting wow and yeah we're, we're with a bigger audience here on youtube okay so there's something happening here with a masculine energy hang on the lighting's gone really bright too i'll just try and reduce that there we go yeah okay something happening here with a masculine energy this is not an energy that you can escape from or get away from or this is part of your life okay and but you do love this person and guess what this person loves you um your feminine energy is strong you want to do things the spiritual way you want to transcend you want to go above you don't want to be tangled in this you're doing all the right stuff okay you're you're wanting to 
figure out how to love this you know it's like this is hard work okay this is really really difficult work because at the end of the day you know that all is one that this person is me it's part of me this person is part of me i probably negotiated in a soul contract that you know before i was born that i wanted to come and yeah i, I suppose save the day um be loving under you know be, still find a way to be loving under extremely difficult circumstances what I see is that this challenge or this issue is not stopping or blocking you on your path it's not stopping or blocking your growth it's not because this is here for you you are the queen of pentacles so it's that feminine flow. It doesn't matter if you're a masculine watching this, that's fine. Because masculine, men want, should want to have a great feminine side because that will help them be rich. <laughs> okay, so that everybody, you know, if you want your riches and abundance to grow, it's your feminine side that you want to have strong okay and but you do have that i think that's what you do have i think you've got a really strong feminine side it's coming through in so many ways but what you are deepening i think is your commitment to the spiritual path it's your commitment to your yeah your spiritual quest and what you agreed before you incarnated that you you know you're like okay i want to go to earth again i want to see if i can be with that person see if I can be balanced see if I can love anyway see if I can be me and give them the freedom to be them because I mean it might be that they're behaving like this <laughs> you know it's like we don't like too much of this you know it feels like this <laughs> right so yeah this this is bad I know but you're deepening your commitment to the spiritual path which also means that you are committing to not mirroring back their energy to them so they want to fight you they want to bite you but it's like you're committing that i don't want to mirror that energy back to them that's their energy so they can fight me, they can bite me, but I'm not going to fight them. I'm not going to bite them back. I don't need to do that because you've committed to the spiritual path, which is really, that's what we all need to do. It's really brilliant. You're doing great, okay? And we see in the painting, don't we? We see that love conquers war, okay? If we go back to that painting, and maybe I'll put that up on the screen, um, you know, Venus, she's cool as a cucumber, not a hair out of place. She's balanced, she's calm. And you can let the God of War exhaust himself in front of you and you're fine, you know? And I think that's what you need to do, just be that space in which, all right, if you want to be this character, and if you want to be engaging in Ten of Swords energy, yeah, I'll, I'll even let you do that. You know, because that's what, that's what the gods do. The gods allow us to come here to earth and exhaust our, our negative energies. You know, this is the earth plane where we do that. We come to uh exhaust and release whatever's left whatever's unprocessed whatever's undealt with equally if you've got negativity in you ask god to to clear that give it to god say look i don't want to give this to the person who gave it to me god can you help me i want to give it to you show me what to do and i will recommit to you and I will recommit to not falling into the trap. Somebody's putting a trap. Somebody's getting, trying to get you to be small or 
to behave badly or something like that and you're just like no I, I don't want to do that you're doing great okay you're doing great on your path let's take a look and see what's in here by the way we have yogananda in the jar but now we've got some extra things i wrote some uh, other ones wow this is a new one okay tell me and i will forget show me and i may not remember include me involve me sorry i can't even read my own handwriting involve me and i will understand involve me include me it's like get me to be part of it and i will understand and that's the thing of incarnating here that is the thing of the quest the spiritual quest you're like well okay i want to you know i want to go to earth i want to work on this i want to really deeply understand what are these negative energies how do they work I want to experience it myself but I want to experience it myself so that I can transmute it so that I can change it I and, and you want to be great at change you see because the people who do this kind of thing they are committed to doing anything but changing they don't want to change Whereas you do, you're on the spiritual path, you actually want change. That's what the spiritual path is all about. So it's all change all the time. You know, we keep evolving and growing on that path. Oh, here's a yoga on the yoga on the bite here. Love of body is therefore nothing more than love of jail. Yeah yeah and it's kind of like loving the world loving what's out there loving what's real you know in quote marks wow and that's kind of putting some new context on this card here because it's like yeah what what do you love Do you love security? Do you love, what do you love? I, and, and that's also what this card is like. It's, yeah, it's getting, it's challenging us. It's saying, what, what do you love? What do you love? Do you love security? Do you love the unknown? Do you love, could you go it alone? And this doesn't mean that you have to leave a person or a family or a situation it's not that but it's like are you making yourself into a strong independent being because if you grow you like your life will grow and your abundance will grow and who knows what you'll outgrow and who knows what will naturally leave your space and then in that emptiness, it's like the emptiness, like a, like a wave, you are the shore. It's like the wave's gone out, but then a new wave comes in. This is so interesting because I feel like none of this reading is asking you to leave a situation, but it's asking you to go up, to transcend, to evolve, to build you, to build your abundance, build your thing. No one's standing in the way of that. No one. You are free. You are totally free, completely free to create the new, to create abundance, to create brilliance and beauty and all the things that are you, you know, all the things that you've come to share. Do you know, I think we can just park that there and put that right there. <laughs> We don't, we don't need to, there we go. We've alchemized. We've done some alchemy here, okay? Look at that. It might, that stuff might reemerge, re but you'll be stronger. And if and when this stuff reemerges again, it, it'll be diminished, like you'll be stronger. Um, let's see if we've got anything here. 
all right so we've got a nine and we've got Pisces yeah we've got Jupiter so it's it's like um Jupiter Lords um Pisces and we've got nine I'm taking that as a ninth house we're looking at Sagittarius we're looking at Pisces here so this is really interesting because it's like you're learning uh academically spiritually emotionally physically in every single way you're learning the spiritual path and you're deepening your yeah you're deepening your connection with god because when you get that relationship right then all of your relationships are fine and you are protected as well so just keep committing to the path the spiritual path keep committing to your spirituality to god to all that's good and you're going to be fine you're going to be fine and if you have to re-encounter a challenge or negativity or difficulty again you will be re-encountering it you will be stronger more independent more capable that's the growth you're doing it you're doing great all right well thank you so much for being here group number one i hope this was a good reading we are now going to welcome group number two i'm just going to put these back Hi there, group number two. So if you chose the Turner painting, all right. So this painting, I've got some notes written here. Dido, the queen of Carthage, is surveying the architecture of her as yet uncompleted city. Wow, the uncompleted city. So what are you building, group number two? what are you what are you creating what are you architecting oh oh no okay we've had this completely fall overboard so we're going to take it and put it right there let's put it right here i'll shuffle you another one and hello group two by the way this is going to be on both youtube and on patreon since I've gone to a little bit of effort this time, I thought I would, I thought I'd put it on both platforms. Now you can come onto Patreon and watch ad free. It's free of charge to join. So you can also do that if you would like. Uh, let's see, all of these aren't gonna fit. So we're not gonna have an animal for you because you're gonna have two of those other cards. Didn't know that was happening. All right, so yes, the uncompleted city. So what are you building? What are you designing? What are you creating? You're clearly creating a new world, a new pathway, a new something. Okay, could even be a new relationship. There's a lot of basically, I mean, when you're creating one new things, you're creating all kinds of new things, isn't it? It's not just... You know, you're creating a new mindset you're creating a new like look at that a whole city is being built here so let's take a look at what this is oh wow ace of cups again how incredible whoops i shouldn't have said that in case you aren't watching all the groups <laughs> but that is beautiful okay so new love is part of this city that you're creating two of swords yeah all right so i mean here we've got the visual of someone who can't quite see what's going on two birds interesting mm -hmm. it's also a new moon up there as well oh that's lovely okay despondence a 
lotus, oh how wonderful. Out of the murky waters the soul rises and unfolds. This is reminding me of Anuradha Nakshatra. Pretty sure that's the one with the lotus. Wow, beautiful. All right. Hanged man, yeah. Yeah, I know this one. <laughs> I have a lot of hanged man energy in my life. What's really interesting is that she's still looking up, even though she's upside down. She's still, her head is upwards. And the, all the light connecting in with her crown chakra. Wow, that's a beautiful hanged man. Okay, let's see what else we have. The star, that's wonderful. Wow. Yeah, we're on YouTube, so I have to be careful about covering up, I don't know, pictures or something. But everything's okay so far. <laughs> Ooh, the Knight of Swords. Hmm. Interesting. All right, well, I want to get us an exact dictionary definition for despondence from the Cambridge Dictionary. Despondency, the quality of being unhappy with no hope or enthusiasm. Yeah. The reason I wanted to double check is because she's looking fantastic. I think she is anyway. She's got the world here at the third chakra area. And yet this character here is the despondent one, I suppose. And despondency, the quality of being unhappy with no hope or enthusiasm, yeah. There is this feeling of, you see, because this card and then there is, so there's this as well, the lotus, and it's really interesting, all the colors match beautifully here. Out of the murky waters, the soul rises and unfolds, which is very true. The thing is, this is a time-consuming journey that you are on at the moment. If you're architecting a new city, a new pathway, a new way of life, a new way of being, it's actually a really huge project, what you're doing. And with Turner, what I love about his paintings is, yeah, they are these great big, sweeping scenes and you've often got the sun and a lot of sky and you know the whole ocean or like a whole city or this is big stuff so occasionally on this path it's just going to be it's just going to be a bit quiet and not much happening you know and but the stillness and there's these murky waters and yeah we've got this little lotus blooming but then there's a lot of just murky waters stillness not a lot going on and a lot of this hanged man feeling but look at this i mean she's also building like in order to be able to hang upside down and do these kind of inversion postures in yoga, like physical on the mat yoga, in order to do a handstand or a headstand or be upside down or any of that. Just in order to be able to do that, you're building new musculature, sense of balance has to be calibrated, um, breathing, you know, the body is figuring that out. What else is going on here? So this is also a great lymphatic workout as well. So all of your, your internal mus 
musculature and your internal systems and organs are getting a workout. And these might be organs that haven't worked out for a very long time. So when you do inversion postures, like as an actual physical activity, it's a lot for the body to deal with. You're building and, and what's happening. So when you're building that musculature and the new breathing and the lymph is working in a new way and all of this stuff, it's like people just see that, well, you're just hanging upside down doing nothing. But they don't realize how hard the body is working inside. And it's kind of what I'm getting is that you're in a phase where you're working a lot on the inside but the outside world isn't going to recognize that. They're not going to see that. And the outside world is going to be like the outside world expects you to be a person of action. You know, they expect, yeah, hustle culture and, oh, you should be do, do, do and get out there and, you know, all that kind of thing. And yeah, that is true. But it's like there is, we've got a healing card so that means there is healing taking place. There's all this unseen stuff that's going on. You know that that's happening, but it might be that the outside world doesn't know. And that's also what we've kind of got in this picture here, that the world expects us all to be like this, but we're kind of looking at this thing going, well, but do I really want to be that? Do I really, is that, is that what we're all supposed to be? Yeah, is this what we're all supposed to be? Are we all supposed to aspire to be this person? You know, it's like, it's kind of like the pop star on stage or something. It's like, oh, am I meant to, am I meant to do that? <laughs> you know, it's like, well, you might not want to. <laughs> And I think that's, but this is what, what is good. I think you're being given time to figure out who you are and what you really do want. And definitely don't underestimate that whole process or the time that that takes. That takes time. That's the two of swords. It really does take time. Healing is needed. I mean, it does say here, out of the murky waters, the soul rises and unfolds. There are, there are some murky waters here. There's stillness, there's a bit of stagnancy. But there's a ton of healing going on. Wow. And it's all that internal stuff that people can't see. It's like a large ship when a large ship when you if you're changing direction I've used this analogy before and there's a large ship or something like that to turn around the large ship takes a long time to, to change the direction so this is a journey of time it's an uncompleted city it, it it's going to take time to build your love for the path will get you there. Your love for your work, your love for the truth as well, because what you're wanting to create and do with this city and this thing that you're trying to create, it's like you, you haven't left one rat race to go and create for yourself another rat race. No, you've, you've left a rat race to create a new city, a new celestial, beautiful city full of love and truth and all that kind of thing so yeah i mean it, these things take time let's see what else we've got here and it's okay look feelings like this are going to come up and but they'll just um they come up and they leave you ask god to clear them and, and they get cleared but allow this stuff to to come up and out i've had a ton of this uh, despondency thing yeah I, I feel it every now and then yeah, it's just, and you kind of just think, oh, well, what am I doing? Or, you know, oh, well, do I think that that often? Not that often, but because thankfully I've got, you know, the channel and 
Patreon and I've got clients coming. I've got enough activity to sort of keep me busy. <laughs> but every now and then I do get despondent myself. I just think, mm, what is this life about? You know, is this, is this it? It's that, it's that feeling, is this it? That, that reminds me of, um, so my brother had this friend. This was like when we were school kids. Um, I think my brother would have been a very small kid. It's a really cute story. He would have been seven or eight. And he said to his little friend, oh, because the friend was like, oh, I've heard all this thing about Indian food. And he was a, like this little Aussie kid. And my brother's like, oh, yeah, we make that. We have that at home. And this kid was just like, oh, my God, I have to come to your house. I have to. I have to eat at your place. And he got all excited and he thought he thought it was like he was getting on a plane and going to an exotic land or something. Anyway, he comes around to our place and then he they they go up to the pot or something at the stove. And my mum just cooked some dal or something like that. And so they open the lid. And then and the little kid that came to our house, he goes, oh is this it like he was so disappointed to see that pot of dal he was just like <laughs> he was like oh i was thinking it's going to be you know i thought it was going to ch change my world and um you know it, it, it just looked like a pot of dal <laughs> <I'm fine. laughs> he was so underwhelmed i think he was hoping for some tandoori chicken or something you know with little bits of pomegranate and um, you know, something that looked magical, you know. He was after some photogenic food and unfortunately that's not what he found. <laughs> Great story. My brother tells it really well. Let's see what's in here. But is that, I think, yeah, yeah, no, they opened the pot and he said, is this it? I think it's that. Yeah, I th it was that. That's the line, isn't it? Is this it? Anyway, it's, this, is the, this is the kind of card where it's like, oh, is this it? Is this life? you know and I and I become this pop star and then and then what and then I'm still me you know it's like <laughs> it's like yeah I'm I'm her up on stage with the millions and the you know I'm I'm a pop star now but oh I'm still I've still I've still got I'm still carrying this you know I'm still I'm still underwhelmed you see because we're not going to find it out there in the world we're gonna I'll tell you who we find out there in the world we find Dude's like this. Look at him. He's just out ready to con you out of your money, isn't he? He's, look at him. I wouldn't trust this guy. <laughs> look at that. No. And that's the world. The world is like this. But you are all about this, you see. This. And this. And the Ace of Cups. So you're creating the right thing. Stick with those vibrations, you know. Oh yes, look at this. How fantastic. This is so perfect. Material desires take away the desire for the infinite. Yogananda. Yeah. See, it's like, oh, but I, I wanted the world. I wanted all this. I thought I wanted to be the pop star. <laughs> yeah. Material desires take away the desire for the infinite. Do you know, and, 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 and when you consume a bit of the world, you just want more. I felt like that. So I went, I went into town because I never go. And I want to go out again. I'm like, oh, I didn't get to see this other thing. There was this shop I wanted to go to. I didn't get to see it. I'll have to go again. So it's like that. It's like you taste a little bit of that and then you just want more. But then, then you want the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And it's like, so all you have out there in the world is just more unfulfilled desire. So more world isn't going to fix it. it. It really is true. This stuff is true. <laughs> all right, let's see what's in here. Oh, this is good. Life has many different chapters for us. One bad chapter doesn't mean it's the end of the book. Anonymous. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, and I mean the chapters of our lives, the Mahadashas. I'm talking about that on Patreon at the moment. That's the thing we're studying. Yeah, it's never the end of the book. And we come back, you know. We come back a lot. Let's see what this has for us. If it has anything to say. 
It always does. Oh, 12. Yes, Pisces. And oh, some Aquarius. Yeah, let's focus in on that. See, it's going to focus. Oh, there we go. 12 and Pisces. Yeah, so we're, you're really completing the end of the zodiac here. You're working with very high spiritual energy. You're completing some really big things. There is a need for you to be an individual, to be separate, to be different, to do your own thing. There's definitely a desire to merge, to be with others, union, this kind of thing is very good for you too. Jupiter and Saturn. So this is a, yeah, you're working with the big, 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 big energies here. And this is, you're materializing something huge. So keep, keep chipping away. Keep at it. You're doing brilliantly, group number two. The energy is good here, ultimately. It's just that little thing of, you know, it's taking time. All right, well, thank you so much for being here, group number two. And we are now going to welcome group number three. Group number three, you chose the Rousseau painting, The Surprised Tiger. I love this painting. It's, it's really lovely. I actually saw, I went to a Rousseau exhibition one time. I can't remember where. It was here in London, but it wasn't at the National Gallery. I, I'm not sure which, I've forgotten where it was. But I remember seeing that painting before. And yeah, it's a beautiful painting. Uh, shall we take an animal card? We will, because we did take one for group one. We didn't take one for group two. Oops, spoiler alert. <laughs> Some of you watch all of these. Um, all right, let's see what's in here. So it's a surprised tiger. So. We've got the element of surprise here, which is a lovely energy. That's why we come to Earth and that's why we forget because we want to be surprised and delighted by the universe, if at all possible. Oh, the Queen of... Get out. That is amazing. We'll take it. And we'll, we'll take an extra one ah, because we've seen it. All right, so we've got the Queen. Oh, pentacles, we're going to look at that first, it seems. Yeah. Surprise tiger. I'm just trying to tune into that painting. Let's have a look at all these first. I did shuffle guys I really did shuffle okay all right knight of swords the world wow okay completing something here right oh how wonderful the ace of wands wow very nice all right good good oh <gasps> The world twice. Oh. Oh, that's huge. Got a world map on her skirt. Maybe you're going to do some travel. Okay, we've already had a tiger. <gasps> Tarantula. Wow. Gosh, that surprised me. Ooh, okay. Interesting. Do you believe that might be a bit dangerous? <laughs> but let's have a look at what else we got here. Fish, okay, wow, this, this one is just full of animals. Okay, this is 
Very interesting. It says here, change is inevitable. Reinvent to adapt. Okay. We can certainly do that. Bittersweet. Wow. Huge energies here. Massive, massive, massive. I think you've conquered something is what I think. I'm getting, and that's why we've got a bit of this bittersweet thing here. It's like you've conquered something and you're about to say goodbye to a realm of your life. You are changing. Change is inevitable, reinvent to adapt. It is because you are doing the spiritual work and you're committed to change that your whole world is about to change. Your, your whole world is about to change completely. It's bittersweet because you love the people that you're leaving behind. <laughs> now, do you actually ever leave these behind? You technically don't because they're part of you. So, but it's like you're packing your energetic bags and you're about to go to very new places. You're going to sweet places now, <laughs> for sure. You're leaving the bitterness behind. You're wrapping it all up because we've got this Ace of Wands and the order in which these came out is significant. I think you did achieve some level of past success in the world. I think you have conquered and figured out how to not be hoodwinked. It's like, yeah, it's like I don't think people can manipulate you anymore. Your energy is your own. Look at these two. Look at how confident. They're both women. They're both so strong. They're both so ready. They're ready to take on the world. But from... And this, so this is you. You're ready to take on the world now. But from a completely different place to who you were before it's kind of like now the world has to come and seek you so before perhaps you were going out in the world and seeking money and creating and doing things I don't know something like that you were playing the games of the earth and trying to ascend or Maybe the world was more real, but it's like now, no, the world, the world out there is not real, as real for you. It's more of an illusion. And it, the world, is going to seek you in this new beginning. It's a new creative beginning. It's a whole new thing. It's a whole new realm. It's a whole new world. And I think you're going to have to learn how to be in this new world as well. Yeah, these energies, that, that's just so incompatible. With the sweetness that you are now. Because th this tarantula is like the bitter. And, it's like, and these could be family members. These could be people who are part, part of your life. Uh, and there's, you see, you've tried so hard. I think I think you've tried really hard with certain people and you're like please come with me I'm a, I'm about to I'm about to go up I'm about to go to a new place come with me it's going to be so much better up there I think you've tried really really hard but they can't come with you so energetically, you must, you must pack your bags and you must move. And 
I mean that energetically. You might still live in the same house. You might still, you know, the, these the, these people are they're your life, but it's like you're changing. You have to change. Change is inevitable, inevitable. This must happen. Reinvent to adapt. So it's like you have to just energetically get ready is what I'm seeing. It's going to be shown to you. I think if things are quiet and there's not much going on, just rest. Don't do much. But know that, you know, the moment that God gives you something taps you on the shoulder says look i need you to take this job or i need you to do this thing or i'm going to give you this all this stuff or you know when god comes in you be ready it's that it's like the world's going to come in but it's going to be more god energy coming through the world seeking you type thing I think you've done a lot of tests and I think you've been so loving and well-meaning and you just want your people to come with you and you know enjoy the fun or whatever but maybe they can't you know they want to stay where they are energetically you have to let them stay you have to respect their free will. Which is fine. That's not hard to do. <laughs> You'll do it. You'll do, trust yourself. Trust that you're going to do what's needed and what's right. And Because you've got two world cards from two different decks. You have completed something, my goodness. And then... Boom, immediately Ace of Wands. New start to your creativity. Wow, huge. Though God is imminent in the finite beauties of creation, it is wisdom to realize one's eternal self beyond form and finitude. Yogananda. Yes, that God is imminent. Yeah. See, and that's what I was saying when I said that God, like God's going to come through the world to find you now. But it's like before you were going into the world, maybe to find, well, yeah, sort of maybe to find money. <laughs> but that's fine. We all do that. Look, I'm doing that myself. <laughs> but what I'm talking about here is that like, um now it's like you're not you're not going to the world to seek worldly stuff though god is imminent in the finite beauties of creation god god is is there in you know the things that you were seeking you would have been seeking yes money and, and but beautiful experiences that well i want you know to buy these beautiful things or um to go to a visit an art gallery or oh, that's all wonderful like and god is there in the art gallery and in the paintings and in all the things that is true but it's like now you're on the precipice of a whole new way of being and that is to let go of seeking the world to let go of the need to seek or to let go of desire even and it's something about that such profound stillness that the world is going to come and seek you yeah that's kind of what i'm getting so it is wisdom to realize one's eternal self beyond form and finitude and it's like in that wisdom in that stillness the world is going to come and get you and and applaud you and fan your flames and all that kind of stuff that's when stuff is on you know what i mean like there's a difference between when we're trying to manufacture something and when life is asking something of us there is a difference there 
Wow, this is very deep, guys. I'm sort of... <laughs> I'm, I'm doing this from a, a place, a point of consciousness of wanting to go back to this cute little Italian shop that's just near Victoria State. <laughs> I'm like, I still want the world. <laughs> I just, that's all I want. <laughs> oh, this is good. It is easy to be brave from a distance. Omaha yeah wow well you're gonna be tested look I don't know what this future thing is I have no idea I, I can't I don't, I'm not getting any visibility on that and I think that that's some kind of compliment to you as well I think you don't need to know but I think whatever new phase you're about to enter once you know you've finished your completion time I mean your completion time you might be getting some rest right now you might not have to do much but when the new thing, I mean, that, that, this could all start in the new year, okay? It, but d it depends on when you're watching this, of course. But um, yeah, I mean, you might be thrown into something. It is easy to be brave from a distance. I mean, you, you'll, you'll be tested again. <laughs> but I think the tests will be new and different and possibly with people other than your usual people, okay? So I think, I think that's why we can't, I can't say what what it's what it's going to be wow group three big energy you're the tiger you're about to be unleashed oh 12 again wow we got big energies this big piscean sort of i'm going to say take this 12th house pisces that kind of thing and we've got a bit of virgo here yes that's been this reading. My goodness, this whole reading has been exactly this. It's been, you know, Virgo, opposite Pisces. It's been, you know, the world versus God. Yeah, huge, really, really huge. Beautiful energy here, group number three. Well, thank you so much for being here. Please let me know how you get on in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you and... As always, I look forward to seeing you next time.